Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We are very happy to bring our show to you, Speak of Africa. Last week, we spent some time talking about the Wagner Group. This week is going to be a continuation of the story, the activities of the Wagner Group. We spoke about the failed coup in Russia, but this week we're going to look at the aftermath of this failed coup in Africa. As you know, the Wagner Group is not the same as Wildwater, which Putin uh, was trying to recreate. Wildwater is an American contracting firm. This firm is not part of the U.S. government. Interestingly, Putin lied to the public by saying that the Wagner Group is a response to wild water, or tide water. It's a lie. Wagner Group is a way to conquer Africa for Russia. That was uh, Putin's game plan. So the whole game plan is like a game of cards. It comes crashing down in front of Vladimir Putin. Okay? But the dictators, the African dictators, who are following Putin, they are actually playing the game of Russian roulette. And that's what we call it, the game of Russian roulette. So before we proceed in presenting the news to you, we're going to look at the way the aftermath of this failed coup d'etat will play itself out in the motherland. Already, you should know that the Wagner Group had its footprints on so many African countries. You have Burkina Faso. You have the Central African Republic, you have Libya, and of course you have Sudan. We're going to focus on all these countries where the Wagner Group has made a lot of inroads. The Wagner Group is basically like Putin's private army. Last week, there was a mut mutiny. They started marching to Moscow. Then they had to make a deal with Vladimir Putin. Then they made an about turn. Okay? But before we continue, we want to thank all our subscribers. Without you, we we'll not only really have a show. We also want to thank all our viewers. We are asking you to continue viewing this show. We are asking you to share the show with your friends. The more you share, the more viewers we get, the more people get to know about our show. Because this show is intended to bring consciousness among Africans. Consciousness is a very central theme of our show. Because awareness, we want to raise your level of perception. We want you to understand what is happening around you. Don't just eat, drink, and sleep. That's what animals do. As Africans, we need to start thinking. We need to wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay? We need to live a conscious existence, which means awareness of what is happening around us. Without further ado, let us look at Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is the first country we're going to look at today. Burkina Faso just had issues with uh, the French news organ. A French TV was suspended in Burkina Faso. This same week, you have a lot of killings also in Burkina Faso because the Wagner Group went to Burkina Faso to try to get minerals in exchange for protecting the president the, the country gives the Wagner Group its mineral resources. It happened with Habiba, Damiba, then it, it's happening now with Ibrahim Traore. They are bringing the Wagner Group to come and help prop up the ailing dictatorship. But dictatorship cannot really withstand the onslaught of the jihadis. So the Wagner Group has not been able to help Burkina Faso to keep the terrorists at bay. So let us understand that this is the problem, this is what is happening. Uh -huh. Ibrahim Traore has to do a better job. Now that Russia is facing its own crisis, what is going to happen to the, the clients of Russia? Things are not going to be well. Because so far, we've not really seen signs that the Wagner Group has helped Burkina Faso fight off jihadists. We've always explained that the solution to this problem is not just militarization. By bringing the military, the Wagner group is very, very cruel. And they kill people every day. 
They do stuff that you not believe you can do to human beings. But has that stopped the terrorists or the people they call terrorists from creating havoc in the country? No, they have not stopped. So they continue creating havoc. So Ibrahim Traore is soon going to lose the love of his people because people will get tired. They will realize that he's not up to the job because they continue killing people every day in Burkina Faso. So just by sending away or telling the French uh, TV station not to broadcast stories about rebel activities or the killings that are taking place, you cannot uh, get your way through censorship. Censorship is going to fail, and that's what we're going to know about uh, Burkina Faso. Next, we take you to Cameroon, La République du Cameroon. Well, Mr. Beer has fulfilled the mission of uh, the French president, but you think he will return to his country. No. When he gets to Europe, he has to go to uh, Switzerland, Geneva. But this time, the Cameroonians who are there have told him he's a persona non grata. This guy knows that they don't want to see him in Geneva, Switzerland. But he will never stop going to Hotel Intercontinental. What is wrong with this dude? He's very, very unpopular. The war in Ambazonia has made him unpopular. We told you before that eventually the Francophones are going to get sick and tired of Paul Beer and they would want him to address the problems of the people of the northwest and southwest regions. Because Ambazonia now is in the mouth of Francophones. When I said this many years ago, people thought I was dreaming. No, I understand geopolitics, and I know the way politics works itself out in the motherland. I knew that with consciousness, your average Cameroonian of the Francophone extraction is going to become aware of Mr. Bia's dairy war. He cannot say it's just a small military operation, just the way Vladimir Putin puts it. This is a full-scale war. It's a civil war. Civil war is going on in the country. You have civil war in the northwest and southwest areas. Then you also have the northern area where you have Marwa, Garwa, and Gaundere. Boko Haram is striking at will. The Bia government doesn't know what to do. Mr. Bia is trying to hide. He doesn't want people to know what is happening. But people can see that this guy doesn't have a clue. He cannot contain the jihadists in the north. He cannot contain the people in Ambazonia. We've been covering Ambazonia every week on this show. So much is happening, Mr. Bia cannot contain them. And it's really sad when you look at what is happening. Every day, you only get one tragedy after another. Look at Kribi, ghastly accident. Too many people are dying. What's really wrong? But this guy wants to go and hide in Europe. What is he doing in Europe? Only God knows. So he has his shady deals. That was his doing in Europe. People ask, what is he always doing in Switzerland? What is he always doing in Ottila Continental? Well, that's where he goes to sign deals, all those dirty deals he doesn't want Cameroonians to know. He signs them when he's in Switzerland in person. That's what is happening in the Republic of Cameroon. From here, we take you to the Central African Republic. This is Ashange Tuadera's country. Russia has made its footprint. In fact, this is the first country we knew that Vladimir Putin has sent his talk to Africa to try to build the Russian Empire by extracting African minerals. So the Central African Republic used to be a French colony, and we've told you this on so many of our shows. But right now, because of the disaffection with the French, Russia has stepped in, and Russia is taking over. Russia came in as a way to support Ashanj Tuadera, the president. But they really came there because they really want to trade military might for the minerals of the country. So now you have all the diamonds, all the minerals, then giving protection to Assange to Adera. So it's a typical situation where you have a, a gang. Russia is operating like a gang. You have given me Prigozhin is the gang leader from Russia. So he makes sure he extracts all the minerals in the Central African Republic. When you see the squalor, the, con the conditions in which the people live, when they mine for all these diamonds, you'll be very, very sick. But the war goes on. In spite of the presence of the Wagner Group and Russia, 
the people of the Central African Republic are fighting back. They are dying, but like Spartans, they are not surrendering their country to Russia and a thug, a puppet like Assange Tuadera. We told you before, Assange Tuadera has been toying away with the idea of running for a third term, but the people don't accept this third term agenda. So they have been fighting. They have been fighting Assange Tuadera because they think he's an illegitimate president. Next, we take you to Kenya. Kenya is a country, even though it's not part of the Sahel, but Kenya is also facing its own tragedy with jihadists. The first jihadist group we told you that is operating in Kenya is the Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is an Arabic word for the youth. The youth from this country, after the collapse of uh, the government of Siad Barre in Somalia, so they created Al-Shabaab. So Al-Shabaab has been hitting Kenya because the guys of Al-Shabaab feel Kenya is participating in supporting the central government of Somalia. The youth, the Al-Shabaab, they want to overthrow the central government and create a government in the Islamic hue. But they have not yet succeeded, but this is what they are working on. That's their plan. So it's going to happen. So they are attacking Kenya because Kenya always sends soldiers to fight them. Uh, even though they have been bombing the camps of Al-Shabaab, Al-Shabaab remains very, very strong. And insecurity is rife in Somalia. The same insecurity now is transported like a vehicle to the shores of Kenya. So they've been hitting Kenya with joyful abandon. It's happening more and more frequently. And also in Kenya, we also report a ghastly, deadly accident. Over 52 people were killed, were told, and this is not really good news. This is really bad news. Okay? Next, from Kenya now, we look at Libya. Libya has also been a lot in the news because there was a drone attack of the facilities of the Wagner Group in Libya. Since the downfall of uh, Muammar Gaddafi, peace has not returned to Libya. Libya has become a meeting point of jihadists, people who could not break into that country when Gaddafi was alive. Now, Libya is like a no man's land. Everybody wants to take the oil that is in that country. France, Russia, United States. Everybody is fighting for the spoils of oil that Gaddafi left behind. And now Russia has brought the Wagner Group as its henchmen to try to get protection for Haftar, who is one of the guys, uh, one of the warlords fighting in Libya. So they are giving him support. In exchange, he's giving them all the oil that is in Libya. So the people, before Gaddafi, the king, was controlling the country, when Gaddafi came, he made it in such a way that your average Libyan can live a decent life, can enjoy all the wealth of the country. But now, after Gaddafi is gone, the colonialists are taking over again. They are taking over. The neo-colonialists, they are taking over everything that is in that country, in Libya. So when you look at it, it's really sad, and we say to ourselves, how long can we continue letting foreigners take what we have? They kill Gaddafi. They came up with different, different reasons. Oh, he's a dictator. But Gaddafi had a very good a principle, a very good philosophy, the third universal theory. So he was exploring an alternative. Instead of just capitalism and socialism, he was looking for a different form of organizing a society. And that's what he wrote in his Green Book. It is true, the Green Book is like a utopia. But we think Libya during Gaddafi's days was really close to that utopia. Because the people may not have had a lot of personal freedoms, but they had a lot of comforts. They were paying no electricity. Everything was free for the average citizen. Which other country in Africa can you find such community services the way they obtained in Libya during the days of Gaddafi? None. But today, the people of Libya are suffering. And Gaddafi even predicted it. You're letting them do this to me. They are just interested in your oil. When I'm gone, the oil, they'll come and take the oil. And that's all they want. Gaddafi was right. Gaddafi said the truth. 
Today, the Western guys are like sharks. They are back looking for blood. They're taking all the oil. The oil that should belong to uh, the people of Africa and Libya. They, they are taking it. They're creating proxy wars. They are supporting different sides in the conflict. As the Africans are fighting, so the Western guys are stealing all the oil resources. And that's what is happening in Libya. So with the attack on the Wagner group, it is because the West now is responding to the presence of the Wagner group in Libya. They're not going to give them a free reign over that uh, swath of land. They're going to attack Libya and tell them, you don't have the power to continue doing as much as you think you can do. So from Libya now, we'll take you to Nigeria. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Last week, we spoke a lot about uh, President uh, Bola Tinubu. Now he's uh, the new president of Nigeria. In just a few weeks, he's done a lot of good things in Nigeria, and we salute him for what he's doing. But I think he had a, a form of homecoming this week. He was welcomed as the king of Lagos. You know, He's the man who transformed Lagos into a prosperous uh, a state. People talk about the Lagos miracle. The architect of that miracle is Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Is he going to create the same miracle in Nigeria? That's what some people are hoping for. So like the boy has come back home, and he's reminding them that he's come back, he's going to do a lot of work for not only Lagos, for the whole country. So we have a video to show you the way Tinubu was greeted when he went to Lagos. Take a minute and watch it. Okay, Zagabanu, go there. Zagabanu, go there. Go there, go there, go there, go there. Go, 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 go. The second story we have in Nigeria is of uh, Reverend Father Hyacinth Lomen Alia. This father is a very famous uh, Reverend Father. 
I remind, he reminds me of a certain father, Etienne, we used to have in the Catholic Church in La Republique du Cameroon. This guy was a simple priest. He started using his charismatic powers to heal people. As a healer, news of his work spread like wildfire. You should know also that during the time of Jesus, the popularity of Jesus, what made people believe that Jesus was the Son of God? was his ability to perform miracles. And it looks like Father Hyacinth started performing miracles. He was suspended from the Catholic Church because his popularity became so big. So he comes from Benue State. So now from the pulpit, he was dismissed because he was performing miracles and healing people. So eventually, the news of his uh, expulsion from the church spread. But the people he healed spread the news of his good works. So he became very popular. So even after he was excommunicated from the Catholic Church, he continued healing people. So some of the local politicians of uh, the APC party of uh, Muhammadu Buhari, they felt that this would be somebody they can use. As you know, we've been telling you the story of insecurity in Nigeria for so long. Benue State, it's just like midway between the north and the south. This is where the headers from the, uh, from the north and the farmers from the south meet and clash. Benue State has been a state where a lot of bloodshed, people have been dying. This is where all of this has been happening. Father Hyacinth Lawman Aliyah has become the new governor of this state. He is promising to return this state from hell to heaven. So you know the transition. Benue State now is like hell on earth. Killings, killings, blood, fire, people dying. So Father Hyacinth Lawman Aliyah has promised to ch change the state from being a hell to becoming heaven on earth. So many politicians are skeptical. But even when he was running for office, people were skeptical that like he could win. But with the power of God, believing that he can bring change to the country. So with APC being the, the, the party that is running as of now, we think he will have the resources that he needs to bring peace to that part of the world. Because jihadist activity, insecurity has been rife in Benue State. So there's so much jihadist activity. So the people really need a reprieve from all this insecurity. If the priest is going to bring his healing powers to help these people, that would be nice. But his critics are always saying that much of what he's doing is uh, a media trick. It's like, it's like fake. They don't believe in it. Well, whether you're a believer or not, let's give Father Hassan a chance. Let her, us let him do what he can do to help his people in Benue State. Because Nigeria needs a lot of healing. Let him heal the people in Benue State. And we say, let us give a chance to Father Hyacinth Lomen Aliyah to do what he can do for his state. Because when you look at where Benue State is located on the map of Nigeria, it's right on the eastern side, midway between the north and the south. So when you look at it, jihadist activity have been strong, and we want him to do what he can do to put an end to this. And then there's also a lot of poverty. There's a lot of poverty in the area. So people are hoping that Governor Hayasin Lomen Alia would put a stop to a lot of this jihadist activity and even bring some business. Because when there's stability, then people can use this stability to do business. But when there is insecurity, it's difficult to really do any business. B business activities come to a halt. So we're hoping that with a new hope that uh, Father Hayasin is bringing to Benue State, things will be well. And of course, we like what we see, and we're going to take you now to Sudan, where we'll end our show of today. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. 
call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. There's been a lot of infighting in Sudan, and Sudan also is another area where the Wagner Group has made its presence. In fact, the general who runs the army and the country is beholden to Russia. Russia gives him protection. In return, all the resources of that country go to Russia. So when you look at Russia, Russia has a lot of gold. Where is the gold coming from? The gold is coming from Sudan. The military junta is using the weapons from Russia to stay in power, and that's basically what they are doing. And we think this is really sad. The war goes on. A lot of innocent people are dying. But when is this war going to stop? Most of the forces that think that they can really help to broker peace have just been wasting their time because peace has not been able to return. The two generals are really fighting, okay? Berhan and Hamditi. They're just wasting their time fighting for power because they want to control the resources of that country. Interestingly, all these resources are going to the Wagner Group of Russia. So now that the Wagner Group is in trouble, What's going to happen? The footprint that they have made in Africa, are these inroads going to stay or there will be a change? We can predict that a lot is going to change because the dynamic leader who was running the Wagner Group was Yevgeny Prigozhin. Now that he has been exiled to Belarus, we don't think there will be another charismatic leader who will be as brutal and charismatic as Yevgeny Prigozhin. So even the war in Russia and Ukraine is changing because of the position of the Wagner group. When they leave as players, it will be difficult to bring another set because Yevgeny Prigozhin took some time to really build his, his empire. So all this money that he has siphoned from African countries, why can we not ask Russia to give this money back? Russia has taken a lot of money. Russia has looted a lot of African treasuries, Burkina Faso, Central African Republic, Libya, Sudan. When is Russia going to bring this money back? That's a question for inquiring minds. If you can answer these questions, then you are a true African. Then you can think, then you can speak of Africa. We've come to the end of our show, but we want to say thank you to all our subscribers, and we'll say thank you to all our viewers. Please, a lot of you are contacting us for business and other things, and we encourage you to continue contacting us. Some people do not like the fact that we talk about business on this show, but we've raised the issue with them also. Africans need to be comfortable with the idea of business. Don't feel bad when other people are getting rich. It's like you are jealous. You can get rich yourself, so don't be jealous of other people. God has given you the talent to do things for yourself. So don't worry when other people are doing things for themselves. Some will be like, oh, Prince, Prince, this show doesn't feed me. I have things that I've been doing to make a living. I'm using the show as a way to reach more Africans and to encourage the young generation to be able to do better. If you get this idea, then the show has met its objective. We thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now more than ever, it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern, reliable electronic health records. Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors' visits, diagnoses, prescriptions, and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiaHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. 
Be the first to test drive the LexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.